Welcome to the last question in Paper 1, Higher Maths Leaving Cert 2008, which is question 8. Okay, part A, find the integral of 2x plus cos 3x in terms of x. Okay, as it's an integral of an, in of an addition, we can integrate each term and then add them together. Integrating 2x should be almost automatic, giving x squared plus a constant, which we call c1. The second term does need a little but not much extra thinking. Clever substitution is at the heart of integration, but here the substitution can only be one thing, the 3x. So let's go ahead. Let u equal 3x, so that du equals 3 times the dx, and that implies that dx equals a third du. This means that the integration of the second term, the second term now, becomes the integration of cos u multiplied by a third du. We can pull the third out there, and integrate cos u, which is sin u, so we get a third sin u plus a constant, which we call c2. We can substitute u equal 3x back in now. Include the first term's integration, that was the first term, which is 2x, integrated with x squared, and also combine the two created constants, c1 and c2, into 1, which is called c. So we get the following expression. We repeat our problem, which is 2x plus cos 3x, integrated in terms of x, and we get the answer to be x squared plus a third sine 3x plus c. And that's our answer. So the first section of part b now, evaluate 3x squared times e to the power of x cubed, uh, integrated over the interval 0 to 1. This time we are given a specific interval over, we have to, over which we have to integrate. First we must get the solution, which in this case is quite apparent as we see that the coefficient of e to the power of x cubed is the x cubed differentiated. So what we have in the integral is something that looks to have been directly differentiated, which makes it straightforward. So we will spell it out as it is now and save our energies for section 2. OK, so we repeat, we, uh, repeat the problem and we, and we realize that the integral of 3x squared times e to the power of x cubed is actually e to the power of x cubed. And we, we, find the, uh, we find the values over the interval 0 to 1. And we get e to the power of 1 minus e to the power of 0. Now e to the power of 0 is 1. And e to the power of 1 is just the e number, which is 2.718. Uh, so we get 1.718. That's it. We can go ahead and concentrate on the heftier section 2 now. OK, well, what is this section 2? Well, it's integrating over the interval 2 to 4, 2x cubed all over x squared minus 1 in terms of x. We can introduce a full body substitution to solve the integral. Solving integrals always involves some guesswork to see which substitution is best. Substituting the denominator in an expression like this one is always a good attempt, as it usually implies getting a log, a natural log, out at the end, because the integral of 1 over x is equal to log e of x. This is one of the most famous integral identities. So we go for u equals x squared minus 1 here, and we can then say that du equals 2x by dx, and that implies that dx equals 1 over 2x du. We also note that if we've, if we've said that u equals x squared minus 1, then x squared equals u minus 1 because of our substitution. So our expression now becomes, realizing that by dividing by 2x now, the numerator will turn from 2x cubed into x squared. So x squared is u minus 1, which is what we get on the numerator now. The denominator is obviously u, and then our dx has turned uh, into u by division by 2x. So we get u minus 1 all, all over u in our integral. And we can simplify that a little to make it equal 1 minus 1 over u. And integrating this now becomes a lot more simple, because we've got u minus log e of u over the interval of u. Um, so we, our next move will be to replace our substitution, u equals x squared minus 1. OK, so u. Uh, with x squared minus 1 uh, substituted um, then, is uh, then is evaluated over the in uh, interval t uh, 2 to 4 and then that's subtracted by log e of u x squared minus 1 again over the interval 2 to 4. 
So what we get is in, uh, introducing our values 2 and 4 into x there. We get 15 minus 3 minus log e of 15 minus log e of 3. Okay, now log e of 15 minus log e of 3, okay, is the same as log e over 15 uh, of 15 over 3. Okay, so what we get there is, in actual fact, 12 minus log e of 5. That's 12 minus 1.609, and we get 10.31, uh, 10.391 uh, as the answer. So we can move to part C now. We're given a diagram. It shows the curve uh, y equals 4 minus x squared, and the line 2x plus y minus 1. And we have to calculate the area of the shaded region. Okay, rather than jump into the equations, let's look at the diagram first. It, we should be able to recognize a parabola and a line that crosses it. What's the leftmost x value of the shaded area? Where they first meet, where the line and the parabola first meet, right. And the rightmost value, well, the second time they meet. We're not interested in any other part of the diagram except the space between those two x values, where they first meet and where they meet for a second time. So we definitely t need to find these. First, get the equation of the line in y in terms of x format, and then let this line equation and the parabola equation, a quadratic, equal each other. This will give another quadratic equation, and we will get two values of x out of this. These are the x values for the two meeting points we've just mentioned. These points then represent the interval over which we can integrate. Let's go ahead. So we take uh, our line and reformat it into y equals 1 minus uh, 2x. Let it equal the parabola equation in order to find the common x values. Okay, so 1 minus 2x now equals 4 minus x squared. We get a quadratic, fairly simple one to factor out if you look at the coefficients properly. We get x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals to 0. So the values for x are plus 3 and minus 1. And these are the meeting points of the two equations in terms of x, okay? The x values of the meeting points of the two equations. What we can say now is, that the shaded area is the same as the area under the, under the parabola subtracted by the area under the line within the interval x uh, greater than or equal to minus 1 and less than uh, or equal to 3. These areas we get by integrating both equations over the interval. Let's go ahead. So we get this integral. We integrate the, the, the parabola over uh, minus 1 to 3 and then subtract that by the integral of the line, which is 1 minus 2x integrated over minus 1 to 3. Now, because it's an integral uh, and that's a subtraction, we can actually group the subtraction together, and so we get minus x squared plus x, uh, 2x plus 3, all integrated in terms of x over the interval minus 1 to 3. Okay, now, uh, those are three terms which are fairly easy to integrate. Minus x squared becomes minus the third x cubed, 2x becomes x squared, and 3 becomes 3x. And we have to evaluate that over the interval minus 1 to 3. Okay, it's a question of plugging in the values. We plug in uh, x equal to 3 first, and we get minus the third by 27, plus 9, plus 3 times 3. And then we plug in x equal to minus 1, and we get minus 3, minus a third times minus 1, plus 1, plus 3 by minus 1. Need to be careful with the signs here. So for the x equals 3 uh, component, we get minus 9 plus 9 plus 9. And then for the x equals minus 1 component, we get a third plus 1 minus 3. So we get 9 minus minus 1 and 2 thirds. Okay, so that's obviously the two minuses there means that we're adding 9 and 1 and 2 thirds. And that's the 10 uh, and 2 thirds, which is our answer. Thank you very much.